Um, my name is Bonnie Garcia Glocker. I'm the Assistant Director for the Office of National Fellowships. And uh, today we really wanted to talk about some summer fellowships. So obviously, I mean, we're in the middle of the fall semester at this point. It seems like almost so far away, <laughs> the summer and everything, but it creeps up really fast. So uh, and a lot of these have deadlines that are either like at the end of November or even rolling uh, through to February. So being aware of these now, uh, knowing that you might have to plan some of, uh, some of these out to make sure that you're prepared for them uh, puts you in a better position. Uh, now, uh, our office is kind of a smaller office, uh, but as you can see here, we do have other people. So if you've worked with our office before, do you look really familiar? Yeah, I've, I've been to people. Okay, okay. Um, and so our office obviously has a, a, a it's smaller, but we work one on one with students through those application processes. Um, so I'm really going to dive straight into some of these opportunities. We have like a handful that we want to just sort of put on people's radars. But I will point out that our office works with about 60 nationally competitive fellowships. And uh, frankly, even if um, a student finds one that we haven't worked with before, we still work with students through that process. So that number sort of continues to grow as we meet with different students. So uh, if you're ever on our website or you see something or you're like, you know what, I haven't heard about this one, but I, I found this on my own, uh, please contact us. We're happy to, to go through that with you. Um, hang on one second, I'm not seeing. again shall we pretty sure i'm not sharing my screen so i apologize um oops there is your land let's see if i can get this to actually work okay there we go that looks much more correct <laughs> so um like i said we're going to be talking about a few of these experience or a few of these programs but that's certainly not an exhaustive list um Usually when a student comes and talks to us, the first thing we're going to do is assess what your goals are academically, professionally, extracurriculars, all that jazz to find programs that match with you. The first one I want to talk about today is Freeman Asia. Freeman Asia is a nice one. It's a needs based scholarship. And so the idea is really to get uh, students over to Asia and uh, or I should say Southeast and East Asia to study. And it covers all of those program costs that uh, that come with it transportation you know uh, meals all of that basic cost of living and then the big thing is they want people to come back and share their experience so in addition to going over there and actually studying abroad the big point is coming back and having this um, this service fo the, like follow-up service project and so this needs to be done within that first semester when a student returns and so they really want to make sure that you are coming back, you're sharing those experiences, you're being that citizen diplomat um, from your experience. So if you're familiar with things like the Gilman uh, Scholarship, it also has that follow-on service project as well. Um, and again, basic idea of just sharing that experience, uh, coming back, um, getting other people also involved in, in studying abroad, and in this case, specific to East and Southeast Asia. <clears throat> oh, boy. Sorry, guys. Uh, there we go. Okay, so uh, Freeman Asia sort of comes in three flavors because you can have it cover either just a summer, a semester, or even a full year for three, five, and seven thousand dollars. So it's a good chunk of change to go towards these programs, and, and so you can see it extends even beyond just that summer heading. Um, the biggest part of this, obviously, is that. Um, it's for students that are receiving some sort of need-based financial aid, so they want to assist students that maybe would not have the opportunity to go uh, abroad for these programs. Um, and you need to have one semester remaining upon your return, and so that's to complete that follow-on service project, right? Uh, so if you're interested in something like Freeman Asia, we really want to make sure that we're um, getting you enrolled to in a study abroad program that's going to be awarding credit as part of that. Now this is due in late March, so typically we're starting to work with students on this like in January, early January when they're coming back for that spring semester. Um, sometimes even contacting us before Christmas break, just so that they have an idea of what they're going to be working towards. I think the biggest 
Uh, if you haven't worked with our office before on a fellowship application, the biggest takeaway is usually working backwards from the due date about four to six weeks. So give yourself the time to really be able to develop those, um, the narrative for your applications so that you're not, you know, so many of those applications, so many of them come through and they're just like, ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to do this, right? And that's great, but there are more compelling ways to tell that story. And so giving yourself that like, at least a month to two month range to develop that story out with our office is really crucial in, in, in perfecting that application. Um, another great summer uh, institute is the US UK Fulbright Summer Institutes. So if you're familiar with the regular Fulbright program, this is that program is for students that have already been awarded their degree. Um, and that's so that they can teach English abroad or study and do research abroad. This is sort of considered like the little sister program to that, right? So this, they're really looking for students that are in that uh, freshman, sophomore year. And the idea is to get them overseas for these, um, it's a rigorous academic uh, study. So you're in an actual program, you're taking classes at the institution in the UK, and uh, it's typically about three to six weeks. So it is a very intense, it's, it's almost like, a, you know, summer B and C. So making sure that you, you can really focus your time with those classes. But uh, again, everything is included, which is very nice uh, as part of this. And there are four different institutions, or at least there were four last year. So sometimes these institutions change, uh, but mostly they have stayed the same. I will say the, the one in Glasgow is, I believe, the newest one that's more focused on technology, innovation, and creativity. Um, but you can see uh, farming and agriculture, arts, activism, and social justice, geography, and the built environment. Uh, depending on what your interests are uh, for study, there's probably some way to make that work with one of the institutes. So we've had students that are really interested in like urban planning. And so they were applying for the geography and built environment program at UCL. Um, there was a student that was interested in like midwifery and was talking about innovations in that. And so she actually applied for the technology innovation and creativity. So there's a lot of leeway here. It's really just making sure that whatever um, story or program that you're trying to tell, right, fits with one of the institutes. Uh, like I said, these were the institutes last year that may be changing, but they haven't updated it yet to show that the, those will be changing for this upcoming summer. Now, you can only apply to one institute. So if you have like multiple institutes that you're looking at or, or that interests you, we really want to make sure that you're applying to the one that's most compelling for uh, and, and matches your goals, right? Um, the main part that we will work at uh, work with you will be these two extended essays, so that personal statement and then that current events essay, and then you do have two shorter essays as well. So this deadline is in late February. Typically, we start working with students on this. I think in late November, early December is usually when the US UK Fulbright site updates. And so that gives us the new due date, any new institutions, any new uh, things we need to be aware of. And so we start talking to students around that time. So if this is something that interests you studying in the UK, we definitely want to make sure that we're talking to you before we go on winter break um, to see if it still fits with, with your plans. Okay. Uh, I, I was a STEM student, so this is a, a special place in my heart, is um, the NSF REU, so Research Experience for Undergrads. These are um, really fascinating little summer pockets, really, where they uh, every institution is different, every award is different for this. Say they're like in the University of Colorado, they have a meteorology REU. And so that REU is going to recruit 15 people 15 undergrads to come out and do research with them in that meteorology lab. Um, and so it's only for those students. At the end of that, they usually have to do some sort of presentation, right? And that's how a lot of these REUs are set up. There's a faculty member or faculty members who have decided to operate this National Science Foundation um, experience. They recruit the undergrads to come in through application. They do some sort of project all together. And then there's usually some sort of presentation or colloquium associated with that. Um, and so really this, it sounds like it's mainly for STEM students and that is the case, but there are lots of opportunities for non-STEM disciplines. 
And that list keeps growing every year. So even if you're not a STEM student, there's probably an opportunity uh, through one of the REUs to really flex on, on your interests there. Just making sure we don't have new people after my name. Okay. Um, right. Everything in here is included as part of that. So uh, typically, and it runs about six to 10 weeks. The other nice thing with RUs is oftentimes this is a, a way to start that network. So a lot of these summer opportunities are ways to like start broadening your horizons as far as uh, professional connections in your field. And that's certainly the case for REUs, um, uh, especially given that you work so closely with faculty members during that process. Uh, these have due dates anywhere from like February to May. It just depends on the REU. So I definitely recommend if you're interested in looking at this, we can start, or interested in REUs, we can start looking at uh, the website for REUs right now. There is one single page that you can go to that where you can search by discipline. You can get an idea of the types of REUs that have been available in the past um, for your particular degree program or interests. Uh, I actually, I, I mean, I had a student who was interested in meteorology, but um, she had not had a chance to do meteorology work here at FSU. And so she, when she applied for the REU, she was still, she still applied for a meteorology REU, but really positioned it in this way of, hey, I have research experience, but I haven't had research experience in the field that I want to go into. Um, and so REUs are a nice way to do that. And they really like to position themselves as like the gateway for some students to get into their particular fields. So come and talk to us about that. We'd love to look at the opportunities that exist for you and help you start narrowing that list down. I don't know why I keep using this thing. Really, it's not going to work for me. There we go. Okay. The Wrangell, uh, the Wrangell Summer Enrichment Program is a six week program and this is really geared towards people that are interested in international affairs uh, and current topics in the media, right? Or not necessarily media, current world events, I should say. And so this is a, uh, it's a program that provides two courses and a seminar as part of this summer experience. And the idea is to really get people focused on skills and knowledge surrounding U.S. foreign policy, um, economics, professional, we put professional writing in here because obviously that's going to be part of it too. Uh, last, uh, the last program had the courses, uh, History of U.S. Foreign Relations and Political Economy, just to give you an, um, an idea of the types of courses that are a part of that. Uh, but it's a very, again, this is opening sort of that, that network up, right? So you're meeting lots of people that are not just in government positions, but also non-government positions that are affecting, uh, affecting events for global issues, essentially. Um, lots of visits to different institutions as part of this program. And so this is, again, something that if you're interested in international affairs in particular, it's a really nice program for that. Now, uh, students that participate do end up staying at Harvard, or Harvard, Howard University. Um, and obviously being right in the heart of DC, there's lots of opportunities there. Uh, even beyond the scope of this program to explore. Uh, it covers all of um, the cost of tuition, travel, housing, two meals a day, and has a stipend attached to it. So you do need to be a full-time undergraduate student. You have to have at least a year under your belt to so be at that sophomore status uh, when you uh, apply. Now, I know sometimes this uh, distinction between you know freshman, sophomore, junior, senior can be a little bit muddled. Uh, especially with so many students coming in with so much credit nowadays. Uh, so what you want to do is always take a look at what are the program, what is the specific program requiring? Typically, they're going to look at when your expected graduation term is and use that as the indicator of where you are academically, right? So um, especially if you're thinking like, oh, well, I want to do a degree in three. Well, that's going to speed up where your senior year is, right? So um, anytime you see a program that has is some sort of distinction of like having to be at least a sophomore or having to be a junior. You know, like in the case of Freeman Asia, you have to have a semester left. So you want to make sure that you're always paying attention to what that requirement is and how they are calculating what your status is. That may be different than how FSU is calculating it, right? Because they're looking at just pure credit hours. Um, so just be aware that sometimes those can fluctuate. You just want to make sure you're very aware of the requirements for those specific uh, programs. 
The due date for this is in mid-February. I think last year it was like February 15th. So we're really looking at talking to students again before they go on holiday, uh, that winter break, so that we can um, just have it on your radar. I think it's very easy sometimes if you're waiting until January to come in to talk to us about some of these opportunities. Everything's starting in January. Um, and if you're not giving yourself enough time, it's easy for some of this stuff to get swept under the rug. So if you're already putting it on the back burner of your mind before you leave for holiday, uh, it definitely makes it a little bit easier to remember. Okay, Humanity in Action is a fun one. If you are interested in human rights and social justice, democracy, all of those great, uh, those great things, uh, Humanity in Action allows students to really dive deep into a, a particular placement city's history and how it intersects with those topics. So you're learning not just um, the past struggles, but also the present day struggles and how those are all for, uh, interconnected for these um, minority populations, cultures, identities, right? So again, this is one of those that has a follow-on project. So they call this your action project. This past year for this application, there was, you had to talk about your action project. You actually had to do a short video. That was like your elevator pitch, essentially, for why you need to go to a particular place, learn those skills, uh, learn the knowledge and skills that you would get for that, uh, for that particular uh, placement. So it's a little bit different than some of the other applications, or at least it was last year. We'll see if that uh, holds true this year as well. But in the past, these pro programs or uh, projects have included like documentaries, uh, art festivals. We had a student that did like a podcast afterwards. Um, just how can you serve the public good? How can you get that knowledge out there so that it's not just you learning about a place um, and putting that into context, but then how are you sharing that with a wider audience? Program locations last uh, in the past years have been Berlin, Copenhagen, Sarajevo, Warsaw, Amsterdam, and Atlanta. Um, we're assuming that these will all be the same places. I know, um, I mean, just given the past few years, there was some that had to go online. Um, we'll just have to see what that looks like. But that may also mean that you have more opportunities to maybe double up on things or take classes or whatever uh, during that time. So again, this is one that we'll be monitoring when that website gets updated, but it looks like it'll probably all be back in person to an extent, uh, with the exception of maybe Atlanta, since that's uh, domestic, but we'll see, right? Um, this is a little bit different as far as eligibility. So you do need to be either a, a full-time student in an accredited university, right, or a recent grad, or if you grew up as a, and are a citizen or are in one of the places uh, of placement, then you would also be eligible to, to apply. So uh, if you're unsure if you meet one of those criteria, just let us know. We're happy to go through that with you. Deadline, mid-February. Uh, we do, I think last year we they updated it like early November or mid-November. So uh, we were working with students even before the break on some of those um, smaller application components so that they could uh, really focus in on the longer longer write, written portions uh, once we got back into school in the spring semester. Okay, and then the last two that I want to bring up today are actually um, our language, uh, two language scholarships and programs. One is the Critical Language Scholarship, so CLS. Um, this is really a, not for someone that is looking for like a leisurely study abroad experience. These are uh, language intensive uh, courses and programs. So as you can see, uh, some you have, you do not have to have any previous experience with that language. Some you need to have like two years of experience or more. So this is one that if you're thinking about applying and you know the language that you'd really like to dive deep in, go to that country, be able to practice that language, right? Um, we may need to plan out a little bit further in advance, um, but there are also programs, like if you are have no experience with Russian, Chinese, or Arabic, but you're looking to make those very quick uh, beginning uh, games, there is another program called CLS Spark, which is an online program, and that's relatively new. We assume it will be back again. This past year was the first year, so we're hoping that it comes back. But then the larger CLS is an eight to 10 week program in the summer and it's open to um, undergraduates, graduate students at all levels. 
Uh, but again, it's like not a casual experience. And not to say that it's not fun. Like we've had a, a lot of a lot of students come back. They're very excited about having done it. Um, but it's one of those instances. I think like if you've been in, I remember being in Spanish upper Spanish as a undergrad and walking in, and it was like the day that we were no longer going to speak English anymore in the class. It's like one of those situations. Like you you cannot be speaking English. They want you to be speaking the language. Um, I do want to point out because I didn't say it earlier. This one has those two letters of rec that are needed. If you haven't started thinking about who would be writing your letters, who could provide, you know, a, um, a testimony of your character, your work ethic, those are the types of things you want to start thinking about. Most of these applications have a letter of rec, right? At least one. So you need to have someone, or, or I would say you need to have at least two people that you could rely on, you know, to, to, to write those for you. So Make sure you're talking to professors. Um, make sure that you're making those connections now if you know people that are like directors of programs. Um, start showing that your interest to other people, right? Uh, I think it's a lot easier when you're applying to some of these if you have people that are already sort of in your court ready to back you. Um, we are actually currently recruiting for this. So it's due in mid-November. Um, but if you want, uh, if you're interested in this for next summer, we would love to talk to you now about that. Um, if you are still interested in it, but you know that next summer is not going to work, right? Um, still come and talk to us. We can start looking at the timeline of what you need to do if there, if we need to be leaving space in your schedule so you can take maybe a semester or two of a class, um, or if we just need to plan out for next semester or next year because this next summer isn't going to work, right? Um, talk to us now. You can see that it has a statement of purpose essay. There are like short, four shorter answers uh, type things. And those are all um, items that we can start at least brainstorming on. How do we want to approach that? And so sort of sister to CLS is the Boren Awards. So there's the Boren Scholarship, which is for undergraduates. And then there's the Boren Fellowship that's for graduate students. Both of them are these, uh, they're for students to get that international and language component. There's wanting students to make gain, like pretty critical uh, gains in language studies. Um, and in the case of Boren, these are languages that have been in regions that are crucial to US national security. Um, now, the one difference between Boren and CLS is that, well, CLS gives you the funds to go do that language intensive. Um, and, and just wants you to gain as much knowledge. You have a pre-test, a post-test, that type of thing. The Boren says in return for the award, you do need to work for the US government for one year. And so you need to work for them in one of these sectors, the intelligence community, Department of State, Department of Defense, Department of Homeland Security. But there's lots of ways that you can work for one of those that would probably fit with what you want to do after graduation. So if you're not sure, please come and talk to us. We'd love to talk to you more about these awards. Um, and you can see here that there's actually a campus deadline on this on December 1st. So if you are interested in this for next summer, come and talk to us now. Uh, we're actively recruiting for that, but we wanna make sure that you meet the campus deadline. You have a faculty, there's a faculty meeting that you end up having with um, different faculty members on campus talking about why you're applying for Boren so that you can get that endorsement. We just want to make sure that you understand fully what that entails. Now, um, <clears throat> okay, yeah. If you are interested in language studies, I will say there's even more that are uh, a little more specific, but we just did a workshop not too long ago. Uh, I believe it was maybe two or three weeks ago where we um, discussed CLS and Boren in more detail, as well as a few others. And we had a rep from the Boren Awards Office who came and talked about their experience. We also did, as part of our alumni series, a talk with uh, someone who did CLS. So I definitely encourage you to take a look at that, uh, the YouTube site for that. Uh, after this presentation, either tomorrow or, uh, or this afternoon or tomorrow morning, you'll get a link to the YouTube for this presentation. So if there are things that you want to reference, certainly you can do that. Um, but it'll also link you to our, the rest of our YouTube page. So you can watch those other videos with the alumni. You can watch the other presentations to just get a better idea of what all is out there. 
Um, again, this is obviously not an exhaustive list. This is just more of a smattering so you can see like, oh, here's all of these different disciplines. Here's all of these different interests. Maybe some of your interests align with what you've heard. Um, if not, that's fine too. o &F is here to assist. So like I mentioned, when a student comes in for that first meeting with us, what we're doing is we're really assessing like, what do you want to do after graduation? What are you hoping to get out of your experience at FSU, both academically um, you know, and with your extracurriculars? We want to know the whole you. So you know, regardless of what you're studying, what are you just hoping to get out of that? And if we can find different opportunities, and I know we can, that align with those goals, then we want to work with you to, through those opportunities. Like I mentioned earlier, typically we're looking at a deadline and then we're working backwards from that. So if a deadline's there, we're looking at four to six weeks, sometimes even eight weeks. In the case of something like the big Fulbright Awards, right? We actually meet with students starting in like May and that's not due until October. <laughs> so it's a long process. And during that time, what we're doing is we're meeting with students one-on-one -on -one to go through their essays, to go through their applications, what we want is to make sure that the story you're telling in those applications is authentic, that it's, it's relevant to the award, but that it's also compelling, right? There's plenty of people that are applying to these awards. So we want to make sure the story that you're sharing, that you're showing, is really getting the point across of why you need to be the person that wins that award. And so um, it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one mentoring, structured reflection, that type of thing, goal setting, um, and just support through that process. And then, yes, sometimes we have snacks or other goodies in our office, and we're always happy to share those too. So please, uh, if you have any interest at all, we definitely encourage you to contact us. Um, this is our contact information for our office, but you can also reach us at just onf at fsu.edu if you just want to reach out to anyone. Um, and then, uh, obviously, you know, let's set up that meeting. Let's start that process going. If none of these interested you, let's definitely talk. Let's find something that will work with your interests and goals. Okay. Um, that is all I have for my portion. So now I'm just going to leave it open to you, but just want to say thank you for listening, for being here today. And um, yeah, I appreciate your time.